have any changes. I have two. Definitely. Well, some of what I previously sent was in the beyond here. Here was at the meeting. And if I recall correctly, Brittany was not there. Was anyone else not there last time? I was there by a phone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that announced. Very present. So, basically list everybody as present and uh, Brittany as absent, I believe. And you were here, weren't you? So, additional, not on board? Yes. <laughs> Tonight, of course, we have two guests, which we really like. If we ever get more organized, we can start posting the maps for four meetings in advance. It might depend upon what the size of the membership needs are going to be. Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we, uh, my other change is Al Browning's project. It's called a nature trail. And what was his report? He said he put it on the agenda and he never said what the report was. What, what happened was that the uh, uh, Barry in middle school had an, um, established the nature trial mm -hmm. on the, um, which one's that? The little creature? Yeah. And it was they, they just wanted to support. Barry in middle school nature trail. And I believe we actually appointed a committee consisting of Al, Karen, and Gretchen. Yes. Could you put that in the mix? Anybody got anything else for changes to the mix? Do we have a motion to approve the minutes with those changes? Yes. Motion. Second. And second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, raise your hand, please. Aye. Okay, any opposed? Same side. Passes unanimously. What's next? Uh, grants. Um, Karen's not here, so I guess I'll go first with the Ben and Jerry's thing, which um, it's, I could have all seen it already on the list, but in case not, pass those around. Ben and Jerry is one of the few, Ben and Jerry Foundation is one of the few that does organizational grants. So we thought we would apply for one of those, and this is the latest lead draft using the discussion from last time. And I just found another thing looking at it just today. The URL for the website is the old one. It should be www.falls.com. Other than that, what do people think about this? I think anyone yeah. that we can get, we should try to. And I may have to trim it slightly because it's probably still too long, but the general content, does this look like appropriate? And it does include now things like amounts of money for different types of category of budget items. This is partly taken from our previous draft proposal to Georgia River Network. And Partly by adding stuff that we now know we have to deal with, like corporate legal expenses and you know, and stuff like that. And it discovered we discovered we can buy arsenic testing kits. <laughs> Is that, you got that included in here, John? Yeah. It's in there. Okay. Under, um, <clears throat> see where it says budget? Water test kits, 900 for quality kits, 600 for arsenic kits. And uh, a little higher up, uh, bottom of the left hand column, like four or five lines up, equipment. The water quality test, test, test kits are 300 each, the arsenic kits are 200 each. Okay, yeah, that's about, I got it. So basically, I'm suggesting three of these. I'd like to make a motion that we agree to submit the grant as written. Yeah, and second on that. And I'd say I also add, I appreciate all the work you did did on that, getting it ready. Okay, very much so. 
Uh, we, we have a motion and a second, and of course, please notice under where it says federal tax ID number, I cannot actually submit it until we have no other that we can use. You're still doing okay, guys? Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. You're welcome. You have baby wings. Do we know what is holding us up on? Wait, 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 we have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there a discussion on this particular motion? No? Okay. All in favor? Raise your hand, please. All opposed? No, that's unanimously. Okay, so now that's the question. Should we discuss the 501c3 issue here or should we do it under the Treasury? Can the Treasury please? Yeah. Alright, so Mr. Chairman, I'll move that we discuss the Karen's not here to talk about the DOD grants and I heard him say to you about that. I'm sure she would have told us if she'd heard something. So presumably we're just waiting for a decision. All right. Um, old business, Big Blue River Paddle Race. Brett, you're on. The event is coming up on March 23rd at Reed Gingham State Park. I went to the uh, Friends of Reed Gingham meeting last Thursday to coordinate the volunteer help with them and they have agreed to supply around 10 volunteers <coughs> they will put two boats on the river a john boat and a um, pontoon boat at approximately <coughs> mile one and mile two on a three mile course on the third, third distance mm -hmm. with some spotters so that if anybody does get in trouble there's, there's a boat available um, they will also supply um, a photographer for the event um, they will have two people uh, to volunteer at registration um, and bring a cash box. Um, I am to bring my two canopy tents, and they will supply the table and chairs for the registration table, which we set up at Red Roberts Landing there at the Mountain Bridge. Um, the plan is to um, do the setup at 8 in the morning at Round Tree Bridge, Red Roberts Landing, and have a volunteer orientation at that point. And then people will start hopefully coming in. We set the registration period from 8.30 to 9.30. The event doesn't start until 10 o'clock, but we want to get people registered from 8.30 to 9.30 so there's time to complete the shuttle. The plan is for them to come to the, the starting point there at Red, Red Rogers Landing, unload their boat, register, then take their vehicle without their boat to the park. And there's a back way to do that where you go, I forget the names of the road, but it's about a 10-minute you know, drive to the Coppola County entrance to the park. And then they would park at the boat landing on the Coppola County side of the lake. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, we've arranged to have a shuttle to take just the people, no boats, no equipment, just people back to the Robert Shane from the start so they mm -hmm. get their boat and get in the water. The people doing the shuttle, um, at this point it's, um, uh, I know a, a man that's a preacher at a church right there at the Robert Shane, it's Evergreen Baptist Church, and his name is Mike Brown, a very fine man. He's got a Ford Explorer, and so he would be able to take six people at a time and explore. Mm -hmm. And then we've also contacted uh, Doug Wade, Dr. Wade, with the uh, uh, ABAC Forestry and Wildlife Club, and he indicated that they would be able to help with the shuttle as well. So uh -huh. with two vehicles, hopefully we can move the 30 odd people, 30 or 40 people, in a couple of trips back to the start. The start, I'd like to have a mass start, so we'll have people put their boats in the water, paddle upstream a little bit. There's a big pool just above the bridge, and people can kind of paddle around and wait, and then we'll start them at 10 o'clock. If there is a surprisingly large turnout, which I don't expect at this point, but if there is, we might be able to start it in two waves and do, you know, canoes first, and then wait 15 minutes and do the kayaks. But I'd like to try to make the start as, as close to at 10 o'clock as possible. Okay, so the start is at 10 o'clock, but you want everybody there at 8.30, right? I want people to register between 8.30 and 9.30, so there's time to mm -hmm. drive their vehicles to the takeout and then take the shuttle back to start and be ready at 10 o'clock. Nathan, can you fix that on the blog post on the website? It just says 10 o'clock. And also in the blog post, you need to, after March 16th, you have to increase the fee. Oh. Goes up to thirty dollars per boat after March 16th. Um, and did we just stick the PDF flyer on the website somewhere so we can refer to it? The uh, event has been um, advertised and uh, it's appeared in the article that I think I sent to the Walls Board Group. It's been in the Moultrie paper, the Valdosta paper, the Adel paper, the Tipton paper. I sent it to the um, 
Thomasville paper and the uh, Wade Cross paper and Fitzroy paper, but I don't have access to those papers. So I don't know if it showed up in any of those or not. Can, can you get can you get to, you know, like photograph or scan the version that actually appeared in some of those papers? I have the copy of the article from the Tipton paper. Okay. I think I'll lost the paper. Yeah. Did you do that? Yeah. I, I mean, yes. All right. I will be able to do it soon, but I'll be able to do it. Um, we've also got uh, flyers at the park. I contacted Charles Steins, who has a huge email list of canoes and kayakers in the region, and he sent the information about the event. We did a Facebook event. And uh, I also contacted Wilderness Way, which is a big kayaking and canoeing place down south of Tallahassee, and asked them to spread the word on. So I think we've got the word out there about the event. Hopefully, we'll get some people to sign up. So far, 11 people have indicated they're going to participate. I only have two registrations so far, but I haven't gone to my field box yet this week. So. Um, as far as the logistics are concerned, so we'll, I'll need two people from Walls, ideally, to help with registration that morning. And um, I'd like to have some Walls members help with the sweep of the course afterwards. So if somebody wanted to help with registration and then still do the paddle event, I mean, if we're making that our, our March paddling event, people can still help out with the registration and do, and do the paddle. What they would do is register, and then at 10 o'clock, once all the others are started, put their votes in and just go down the course and make sure nobody gets left behind. Mm -hmm. Just a leisurely pace. <coughs> We're going to be in line at the uh, uh, Colquitt County boat ramp at Reed Bingham Park um, with the, uh, the uh, finish line, which we hope to put in the water um, if the water doesn't drop off too quickly. And Susan Passmore, Suzanne Passmore, the ringy there, seemed to think that there would be an area we could do that where it's not too deep. And then, um, I have, I have a, I've arranged for a time clock in the car. Um, so people will come out, get their placement card as they finish, and then we'll have a little award ceremony at uh, 12, 12.30 once everyone's finished for the winners in the various categories. And the categories are going to be their uh, two-man canoe, two-man canoe, man and woman canoe, um, overall finisher, um, first, uh, male kayak, female kayak, and kayak, there's one, um, I think that's about it. I'm just the winner in each of those categories. And I, uh, I'm arranging for the medals to be made up at a uh, place in Tifton. I'll supply the medals. I'm also getting some little stickers made up through Montgomery Printing that have the name of the event, uh, Canoe, and uh, the Friends of Reed Bingham and Walls Watershed Coalition at the bottom so that you know, people that participate will get this sticker and be able to put it on the car and maybe spread the word about the event for future years. Um, we're going to have some refreshments at the end of the event. Um, I'm going to order some sandwiches from one of the local subways. They'll make these platters of sandwiches, mixed kind. You can get them for you know, not, not a whole lot of money. And they, they feed a lot of people. I'm, I'm anticipating maybe 50 odd people to get the event. Um, we'll also have some drinks. and. Um, I can hardly wait. Um, <laughs> we've ordered nice weather. We had better luck than we had on the last event. Yeah, right. that, that always has an impact on, on turnout, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I'm told the azaleas, wild azaleas, are already starting to bloom. My great sea graybeard tree is just starting to bud out. It's not opened up, so I'm hoping that in another week it will be in full bloom uh, along the river. Uh, Tim Carroll didn't mention that he circulated the flyer in the city of Valdosta. He's also contacted the 4-H in uh, Lakeland and also Moody Air Force Base. So there's, okay, great. And there's a, a Girl Scout troop whose uh, leader is with the Friends of Reed Bingham organization. She's contacted all the Girl Scouts and they're potentially going to help out as well. <coughs> I contacted the Tipped Area uh, Boy Scout troop and they apparently already have an activity planned for New England the, the Brumby Lake up in Chula that Saturday, so they won't be able to help out or attend, but if any of you have Boy Scout contacts in other areas, you know, if you get to let them know about it, you might have to do it for the Scouts. Oh, and uh, the Sheriff of Barron County, when I mentioned this to him, and I had a long story, he was like, yeah, yeah, I want to be involved in that. Is that Anthony? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Okay. Can you talk to him? No, I know Anthony. Yeah, yeah. and Al was going to talk to him about it. After okay, I mentioned great. It to Al. I got the uh, liability insurance. I, I got two quotes um, from 
people I know in Tifton, and um, the one I ended up going with, and I, I was going to just donate to the insurance, because it wasn't quite as much as I thought, but I went with the Sutton Agency, because theirs was a little bit less expensive, and it also, you know, covered watercraft. The other one said that watercraft were excluded. This one said that watercraft shorter than 26 feet were not excluded, so that's mm -hmm. big kayaks. So now you can... You can't paddle if your boat's longer than 26 feet. <laughs> uh, if anyone wants to see the policy, I have brought, no, yeah. brought it here. There's a certificate of liability insurance. I just sent it off today to the DNR, along with um, the signed agreement that um, my name is on. So, um, uh, how much happens. does it cost? Pardon? How much does the insurance cost? Um, I believe it was $263. And you for anything, or are you? Just for the event. And we put in there the caveat that, you know, if it gets canceled because of rain on Saturday and has to be done Sunday afternoon, it's still covered. We need to be sure we keep track of that as an in-kind donation. Okay. I've got my checks out at home. But I'm pretty sure it's like $263 million. Should we uh, contact the various school systems about this? Is that a good idea? Karen, Karen um, apparently took flyers to the, the Nature Trail opening and distributed mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mind if it's distributed in the schools, um, but um, kids have to be accompanied by an adult to participate. Uh, uh, BSU okay. has a community group. You probably know more than I do. I, I, I see posters up when I go to the rec center. I, I've probably never seen the community. I know we've got a community group in Tifton, and I sent the notice to all the ones on, on that list. Well, can one of you two that's associated with BSU find out? I was going to have a neat poster made up about the event, but I've just been swamped with work, mm -hmm. so I haven't had a chance to design it. And I think at this point it's probably going to be great. I will post flyers out at ABAC because there may be some folks out there. And I did contact the ABAC portion of Marla Club, thinking mm -hmm. they might be interested in participating at some level as well, and they're going to help with the shuttle. Um, I was speaking of BSU, uh, SAVE should be interested in those students yes, as well, and if you want to do that, Nathan. Well, since no one's got a broke foot, it'll be hard for me to paddle, so I'll, I'll help. I'll volunteer. Okay. Probably, I may or may not put the boat in later, but okay. Well, I could, I could so just help. I, you said you needed two from all, so I can. Dave said he would, he would eight, help with registration. So. Eight a.m. Yeah, anybody that's going to mm -hmm. help out as a volunteer would be nice to be there at, at eight at the landing, so we can just you know have one orientation for everybody, and then people can go about their, their business. I'll be there at 8 o'clock to do whatever you need me to do. Mm -hmm. And then we might need uh, a volunteer at the, the takeout to um, help you know, people move their boats out mm -hmm. and to you know, oversee the refreshments and hoping to be some of the you know, four friends of the day with people. Okay. Also, at least one of the people that was involved in the Hotchkiss landing thing uh, says he's going to show up. I wouldn't be surprised if more of them do. I did adjust the, uh, the fee. I think originally we talked about doing a $20 per person fee, and then I was thinking you know, $40 for a canoe is going to be a lot for a lot of folks down here, so we decided to just make it $20 per boat in advance, or up to March 16th, and then after March 16th, it's $3 per boat. So it's just about a lot of I try to, try to get an incentive for people to register at the time. Okay. Yeah, can you make sure the online stuff says per boat instead of per person? Can we get all this stuff? And who's, 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 keeping, who's keeping track of the, the folks that sign up on the email? It comes to our email, our own watershed at gmail.com email. And who checks that? Nathan and I have access to that. Okay, and you're checking it. I think I've seen four people sign up. I think like four that paid, which I'll talk about later. I'll need to get a list of the, the names for that one uh -huh. so we don't have anybody yep. show up and say, well, I already registered I'll leave right on the list. Any other thoughts or to the Kiwanis Club at Adel last Wednesday on my lunch hour, which was tough. Um, and one of the guys there said that he thought a tree was down, and so that's why I asked 
They're really excited about it. Um, I think uh, hopefully this has the potential to grow over time and kind of get, the, get something in that's unique and different. And mm -hmm. the next nearest event is down this one in June. I'd like in the future to um, try to get Qantas clubs and rotary clubs in more areas of the region to you know, help help out and provide volunteer support, maybe get sponsorships because that's where you pull in a lot of the money for these events. Too. I tried to get the ones from the and they didn't take. Um, but um, I think that would be a potential for increasing the fundraising uh, capability in the future. I just mm -hmm. ran out of time this year. Yeah. Uh, I will also contact sheriffs of Trick and Miles County to see if they have any interest, and also the city of Cape Hara. One last thing um, I have been debating about this, but I think it might be a good thing is to. Um, Offer a, a cash prize to the overall winner, maybe fifty dollars or something, mm -hmm. um, just to give a little incentive to try to bring in some of the better mm -hmm. Good plan. Um, we do that for. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Money, money, money. But yes, because this is an excellent event, and that's a good thing. This is somebody that I told about the event, they're like, "Grace, I'm gonna win." I was like, "Oh, good." <laughs> but the other, the other thing I'd like to stress is that it's not just a race. If people want to just come and, and, and have yeah, their own right. race, you know, they're willing to, we'll have to, you know, just tell folks that if you're going to be competitive, we want you at the front of the pack. If you're not competitive, it's like in a 5K. They put the, the 10 minute mile runners at the back. Mm -hmm. They don't get run over and right. get stuff. Perhaps we could get a minute of video of Brett talking about that and the race in general so we can post it on the website. Sure. Your headlights. Sure. Right. Thank you. Not to <laughs> okay, just, I can't give you out too late. I saw a foreman was going to the feed and not be happy with it. Just yeah. All right, just one other thing. Uh, should we uh, contact the TV stations to see if they'd be interested in an interview or maybe showing up on the day? I have absolutely no time to interview between now and the event. 